Hey everyone, it's Alex the Real Mr. Robinson here, and I kind of apologize for this late review. I have said before that I would be reviewing the Ultimate Edition of Batman vs Superman: Dawn of Justice, so I did see the movie a couple weeks ago. But I've been putting off this review because I needed a little time to think about what I saw, and I've been busy with a lot of other stuff. But now, with Suicide Squad coming out next weekend, I figured this would be the perfect moment to do it. Now, normally I don't like to review alternate cuts to movies that I've already reviewed before. If I'm going to talk about an alternate cut, I'd like to talk about it within the same review. However, with Batman vs Superman, I feel like a lot of hype has been surrounding this ultimate rated R version of the movie, so I figured why not share my own opinion. It's like with the rogue cut of X-Men Days of Future Past. I wouldn't have talked about it on its own if it wasn't so built up. Except with the rogue cut, I was really looking forward to that one because I loved X-Men Days of Future Past in the theaters, but with Batman vs Superman, I despise this movie, but I was willing to give it another chance with this ultimate cut, so is it an improvement or am I just that gullible? Well. Well, first, let's let's get into what's good about the movie. I mentioned good stuff in my original review for the movie, so you can go check that out on my channel. But this Ultimate Edition does have a few improvements. For one thing, the pacing is surprisingly better, considering that this movie is three hours long. It felt like it moved a little better, the editing was tighter, and it does explain a few scenarios that were left unexplained that needed explanations. One thing it makes clear is um, the bombing of the Senate. If Superman can see through anything, why couldn't he see the bomb underneath that wheelchair? They basically explained that the wheelchair was made of lead, which would physically be impossible to move. But basically, the wheelchair was made of lead, and Superman can't see through lead, so basically he could not see the bomb. And the guy in the wheelchair was the guy who lost his legs because of the finale of Man of Steel. And we actually see a scene where Lex Luthor gives the guy the wheelchair, and the rest of the movie plays out the way the theatrical cut plays out. One thing that a lot of people had issue with was Superman looks like he's reluctantly saving people. During that whole montage of Superman saving people, it looks like he takes it as a chore and that he really doesn't want to do it. Huh? And another criticism is that after the Senate bombing, Superman just kind of flies away and disappears without helping anybody. It's like, people are gonna think you did it, Superman. Why'd you just fly away? Why don't you stay and help people? Here, they actually have a scene where he is helping people, and it does show that even, like, the cops and medical staff are a little cautious about Superman, uh, because there's one scene where he's helping... Because there's one part in that scene where he's helping a girl onto a bed, and the cop says, thanks, could you give us a little room, please? So we kind of get an idea of, like, why Superman's, like, all sad and shit. Like, he helps people, but they're, he's not sure if people want him, which is still kind of bullshit, in my opinion, because Superman should just, like, do it regardless. But at the very least, he's not an asshole this time around, where he just only cares about Lois Lane and no other soul on the world. And speaking of Lois Lane, she is a tad more useful in this movie. I mean, she does a bit of detective work to figure out certain scenarios. For example, the guy um, at the Senate bombing didn't know he was going to die, and then it leads back to Lex Luthor. So, she is a little more useful here and there, but since the movie doesn't really alternate like the way the Halloween 6 producer's cut does, it does follow the same route, so Lois ends up eventually being there only to be saved by Superman. So there are quite a handful of improvements, and when I was first watching this movie, in the first hour, I was like, you know what, I'm, I think I'm actually warming up to it. I might actually, this might actually change my opinion. And then for the last two hours, it was like, okay, now I'm reminded why I hate this movie. Because while there are improvements here and there, it's still a very bad movie. And there are some things that they should have just cut out overall. They should have used this time to cut out any reference or foreshadowing to the Justice League movies. Like the dream sequences and that little stupid email scene are still in this version. They don't cut anything out surprisingly, which they should have. And then outside of the stuff that they should have cut out, there's just some stuff that as much as this movie improved on a few bits, they're just other things they can't fix. They were doomed anyway. Jesse Eisenberg is still terrible as Lex Luthor. Martha being the thing that stops the big battle is still stupid. And the finale with Doomsday is still absurd and 
a mess. And I'd like to elaborate a little more on why the Doomsday fight at the end is such a disaster for me. The reason is because for the first half of this movie, or hell, now that this movie's three hours, more like the first two hours of this movie, uh, it is very grounded in reality. Not a lot of supernatural stuff or science fiction-y stuff happens outside of Superman. Uh, so it does have a very realistic tone. Whether it's good or not is up for debate. But then when the Doomsday scenario comes in, it feels like a totally different movie. It feels like we're watching something completely different. It just feels out of place. And again, because they introduce Doomsday, and because they do the Death of Superman story right in the end, it's still stupid that they kill Superman in only two movies. And Henry Cavill, as much as he's not an asshole in this cut, and there are a little few pieces in the added footage where he is good, he's still not a good Superman in the end, because he still doesn't smile, he's still boring, it's just not very good. And we've seen Superman be interesting, maybe not like in terms of the character himself, but in terms of a personality, like Christopher Reeve and the Bruce Tim animated series, Superman had really good personalities in both of those series. As for the R rating, when this cut was announced that it was going to be rated R, the first thing that came into my mind was, oh, they're trying to be like Deadpool because this announcement comes out after Deadpool breaks box office records and everybody's loving it, so they want to get into the action. But people have debated with me saying, no, they were obviously planning to make it rated R long before Deadpool even came out. Huh? I'm just like, I don't know, because they announced it as Deadpool just came out, it's a little suspicious, and so I watched it, and there is a reason it's rated R, but the reasons are forceful, they're desperate. For example, there's digital blood splurts, and there's a shot of dead corpses that have been set on fire. We see one of Lex Luthor's henchmen... Uh, the Russian dude who was also in Captain America the Winter Soldier, we see him lighting dead bodies on fire, and then we get a shot of the dead bodies. And it's like, this is way too depressing. This is just so desperate for an R rating that you could have cut that out. It could have easily been PG-13. So there is a reason for it to be rated R, but I am still right in the sense that the R rating is just desperate. It does not need to be needed at all. There was no reason at all for this to be rated R. All that stuff happens in one condensed scene, the Africa scene. And this movie actually hurts something that I really gave high praise for in the theatrical cut, which is Wonder Woman. Everybody talked about how great Wonder Woman was, and for the little time that she's in the movie, Gal Gadot did a serviceable job, even though, I'm sorry, her theme is still utter garbage. It makes her feel even more forceful than she did in the, the theatrical cut because none of the new footage for this Ultimate Edition involves her. All her footage is still from the theatrical cut, so she just feels more out of place. And speaking of three hours long, this movie is three hours long. There is no need for a Batman vs. Superman movie to be three hours long, and there's also no need for this plot to be as complicated as it is. The goal of this cut was to explain a lot of scenarios that didn't make sense, and some of them I got, but most of them, the other side, were focused on things to make Lex Luthor's plan a little more easy to follow. And while they do explain stuff, it still doesn't change the fact that Lex Luthor's plan is so overly complicated. I would really be hard-pressed to tell you every little detail about Lex Luthor's plan, even after seeing the ultimate cuts. So is it an improvement? Not really, in my opinion. It's still just the same really bad movie, except it's 30 minutes longer. Which, if it's longer, normally I would criticize it more and say that it's worse than the theatrical cut. But I did admit that the pacing is surprisingly better this time around because it does explain a little more and there are a few improvements. But again, what's bad about the movie is all in the theatrical cut and it still carries here. When I first reviewed this movie, I said watch it at your own risk because I wanted to give it a fair chance as possible. But after thinking about it, even before seeing this Ultimate Edition, I just have to say, don't waste your money on this. Do not waste your money on the Ultimate Edition. If you liked Batman vs. Superman when it came out in the theaters, then you're going to like this. This is for people who already like the movie. If you're like me and you didn't like the movie when it first came out, this Ultimate Edition is not going to change a damn thing. Huh? It's still the same shitty superhero movie. 
And it, it's just disappointing. It's really sad because I wanted this to be good. I really wanted this to be good. But if 2016, in terms of movies, has proven anything, it's that Marvel is the king when it comes to comic book movies. Uh, Captain America Civil War did not need an extended cut to tell its story, and it's more easy to follow. Batman vs Superman should have been simple. It should have been straightforward. It should have just been Batman vs Superman. No setup to the Justice League. No death of Superman scenario. No Wonder Woman. It should have been as simple as it could, but it just got a little too complicated. And before you go telling me, oh, well, the three-hour cut's too smart for people. No, it's not that it's too smart for people. It's that we're too smart for it. It's still an overcomplicated mess. Don't waste your money on it. And yet, I'm still gullible enough to hold out hope for Wonder Woman and... Justice League, because those Comic-Con trailers were pretty cool. See my movie news show from last week if you want to know my thoughts on the trailers. But anyway, that's my review for the Ultimate Edition of Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Now, before I go, I wanted to say that while I was watching the Ultimate Edition, I did record a commentary just so I could get my thoughts straight for this review. So, I'm going to post the commentary around Monday. So, keep your eyes open for that. It's going to be three hours of me watching Batman vs Superman, bitching about it, and talking about the things I do like, things I don't like. I don't completely trash on it, so there'll be good stuff to say in it, but look for that on Monday, and until next time, I hope you enjoyed this review. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you thought of this Ultimate Edition. Did it improve on the movie? Did it make it worse? And as always, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one.